Abuna Yamataku is a monolithic church located in the Horsen Water of the Tigray region, Ethiopia. It is situated at a height of 2,580 meters (8,460 8 feet) and has to be climbed on foot to reach. It is notable for its dome and wall paintings dating back to the 5th century and its architecture. Where are the Tigray churches? The Tigray region is the northernmost of the nine regions of Ethiopia, adjacent to the border with Eritrea. There are over 120 churches in the Tigray, most to be found in the mountainous region between Aksum and Mekel. Many of the Tigray churches were carved out by hand from the surrounding mountainsides, using axes, picks and chisels. They were hewn differently from the Lalabala churches whereas the latter were carved out from the top down. Tigray churches are located at the top of rock spires, which means that brave builders had to climb, then carve. Quite a feat. The best known, and most visited, are the Garalta churches, found around the Garalta mountains, about two hours away from Mekel. The Garalta churches include Abuna Yamatagu carved into the top of a sandstone pinnacle, plus Mariam Kaka and Daniel Kaka. There are 120 churches in total to be found in the Tigray region, divided in groups. The most famous churches are located in the Garalta cluster, which includes 35 churches. In the mountains of the Tigray region in Ethiopia is a rock-hewn church which is believed to be from the 5th century. Inside the church are vibrant, seemingly new paintings that are in fact 600 years old. Would you risk your life to witness such a spectacular sight? In this series, we will take you to one of the oldest Christian countries in the world Ethiopia, to look at how Christianity reached the country and to bring you to a few of the most famous rock-hewn Ethiopian Orthodox churches. This time, we will visit the church which is considered one of the most dangerous ones in existence. Abuna Yamatagu is one of the 35 rock-hewn churches in Ethiopia, carved entirely out of one single stone. To reach the church located in northern Ethiopia, you must embark on a journey of at least three hours. First, a car ride of no less than two hours, depending on your previous location from either your hotel in the town or the previous church you visited in the region. Then, a 45-minute hike up the 2,580m mountain. This hike is the real challenge of the journey. To avoid slipping off the mountain edges, you must take your shoes and socks off before the hike. The first challenge is to walk along numerous narrow, cliff-hugging ledges. Following that is the toughest part of the climb a climb up a vertical rock wall with a 300m sheer drop. If you've made it this far, take the time to catch your breath first before crossing a natural stone bridge with a drop of approximately 250m on either side. Reaching the destination does not mean the thrilling yet nerve-wracking journey ends you still have to descend the mountain using your bare feet again. The dangerous route to Abuna Yamatagu however, is considered by locals just a normal journey to the church. The church was named after Father Yamata, a priest who is believed to had carved the church out of the cliff face in the 5th century.
it is dedicated to Abula Yamata, also referred to as Abba Yamata, one of the nine saints of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. The nine saints were a group of missionaries who were important to the initial growth of Christianity in Ethiopia during the late 5th century. We will get into this story in our next article. Some speculates that Father Yamata chose such an inaccessible location to build the church because the journey mimics the way to heaven, the way to find true divinity. Others think that Father Yamata wanted to find a secret place for worship. Yet, how did the father finish such a demanding job over 1,500 years ago without the help of machines and modern tools? Perhaps this will remain forever a mystery. After the church was built, however, its walls and ceiling had remained bare until almost 1,000 years later. How did one discover the church after 1,000 years? Who are the anonymous artist or even artists behind these pictures? Locals. Priests. Even experts have yet to find a definite answer. These paintings date back to the 15th century and were painted solely with natural colors derived from flowers, minerals and fruits. Due to the challenging climb up, not many visitors choose to or are able to visit the church thus allowing the paintings to be so well preserved. Another reason for it is that the church is completely dark when the wooden front door is shut. The paintings therefore are less likely to be damaged by sunlight. Only when the door is opened will sunlight slowly diffuse into the church. The most eye-catching part of the drawings on the church walls is the frescoes featuring nine of the twelve apostles of Christ. The intricate lines and details on their clothing and faces as well as the vibrant colors suggest how the church looks as if it was built a few years ago. In the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, those who are holy and good must have their whole face on show. In other words, all facial features must be seen, including both of their eyes. However, those who are evil, namely sinners and people who condemn God, are always shown in a profile with only one eye visible. This style of representation in Ethiopian Orthodox icons makes it easy to distinguish the evil and the good. You can arrange for your local guide to meet you at the airport or hire a driver from Mikel to the girl to range, journey time, two hours. Then you need to hike for another two hours up the escarpment, including a 10m vertical climb to reach Abuna Yamatagu. The three most famous Garalta churches are Abuna Yamatagu, Mariam Kaka, and Daniel Kaka, which can easily be combined into a day trip from Mikkel, or from Aksum to Mikkel. Those with more time can include some of the churches near Adwa and Adigrat, like Abba Garima or Debradamo Monastery, or visit the churches of the Vakro Cluster located about an hour out of Mikkel. A Brief History Abuna Yamatagu was built in honor of one of the nine saints of the Ethiopian Church, Abuna Yamata, in recognition of his work in helping to spread Christianity around the country during the late 5th century. Inaccessible for centuries, the site lay undisturbed due to its remote location, visited only by wandering monks and devout Christians. This seclusion allowed much of the artwork found inside to remain in near pristine condition. The rock-hewn church was carved by Father Yamata during the 5th century. It is not known why he chose such a remote location, however historical accounts from the time report widespread persecution of Ethiopians of the then Christian minority, so many speculate he was evading enemies and capture. Others claim Yamata was seeking solitude and isolation from the world, seeking a place of meditation and reflection, in the hopes of achieving true divinity. Thank you for watching.